everyone, and welcome to another Event Hack Success Case episode. Today, I'm really excited to have Marianne with us here. He's a van hacker who moved from Ukraine to Canada a few years ago, and talking, he's going to talk about his story. Uh, so, Marianne, welcome, uh, and uh, you know, how's it going? Great, to, great to have you here. Uh, thank you, Ilya. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Like I uh, enjoy being here in Canada. It's uh, so nice that I had the opportunity to uh, to move here. Awesome. So let's talk about that process. So tell us before we get into it, uh, you know, what your background is, uh, where are you from, your professional experience, things like that. Uh, so I'm a senior software developer. I had uh, almost 11 years of experience back in Ukraine. I uh, worked mostly with uh, C++ programming language and also had some experience with uh, hardware electronics development and uh, uh, many related things like uh, developing the technical documentation. So kind of that person. Uh, and uh, uh, I uh, was uh, uh, participating in a few embedded hardware uh, development projects and uh, um, they are not now in mass production. So. Very cool. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's uh, it's not so common to find uh, someone who's got hardware experience. So that's that's really it's really nice. Um, okay, and uh, how did you you know where did this idea to come to Canada come from? Like, how, how long have you been looking for a job in Canada? You know, what was the process before you you joined Van Hack? So, uh, it's a kind of long story. So back in 2018, I applied for a visitor visa to come here to Canada as a visitor, but I was rejected because mm -hmm. like they were considering me as a potential immigrant that uh, I will likely overstay my visa and so on. Like that's very common ca case with uh, Ukrainians applying for a visitor visa. So mm -hmm. uh, I was rejected, uh, so I was unable to uh, see my my far family here, who moved in 1950s to Canada, and uh, they live here for like already multiple generations live here. Wow! And uh, yeah, so uh, at that point, I started to thinking about like uh, economic immigration to Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't very serious until uh i think that was uh october 2000, 2019 when i decided that uh, i really want to move to canada and uh, i left my full-time job and i focused on to uh improving my english skills which were uh -huh. not not any close to what they are right now mm. and like i was able just to communicate very basic english mm -hmm. um so yeah uh i was considering only permanent uh, residence uh, option because i didn't know about the uh, work permit global talent stream and this kind of things that right. seemed to me impossible so i was focusing on uh, permanent residence application and had to improve my English really good. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So then how did you find out about VanHack? Uh, what was this, your experience there? Uh, so, uh, actually after I quit my job, I, uh, uh, signed up for, uh, two English courses at the same time. So I was mm -hmm. dedicated. Wow. on learning on improving my english skills uh because you know i'm i'm more of technical person languages are not my <laughs> good side at all the but programming languages are right not, maybe not maybe not the human ones but the... <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> uh so uh yeah so uh and that was i think it was like a day before the new year of 2000 like 20 like it was december 31st or december 30. Mm -hmm. uh i accidentally 
found a, a job posting on a Ukrainian uh, um, like job seeking like uh, a company website oh, right. that offered relocation to Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, so I was surprised because like I at the time I didn't know about the global talent stream and right. how they could do possibly that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was surprised, but this, at the same time I applied just like a, this, the same day I applied and mm -hmm. I was able to get through a job interview, like the first stage with which was with the the uh, kind of like a uh, company, like not the final company, but the, mm -hmm. the, I'll just say intermediate company, like right, the, intermediate company, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The hiring agency. And, uh, like, uh, I went through that. They give me the, uh, test, uh, task, uh, mm -hmm. to do, uh, some, sometime like in two weeks. So I did that past tasks somewhere in beginning of January. And, uh, but at the time they already held, had the candidate that they accepted. So I was, I was not moving forward, mm -hmm. but that, uh, uh, that event gave me, um, an idea that there is an option on how to, uh, how to move to Canada, mm -hmm. uh, like without this whole permanent residency application uh, in front, like up front. Right. So, uh, yeah, after that, I, uh, uh, as far as I remember, I started to apply for every job on LinkedIn in Canada in hope that they will accept me. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, I think, I found about the global talent stream before, before I found about Van Hack. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but like uh, I think few weeks after I started seeking that, I find I, I found the Van Hack. I think I just googled it, something about like uh, work immigration, just like mm -hmm. put in Google and find that website. Cool. Yeah, and then cool. I started. Yeah, to work with Unhack. Uh, nice to hear our SEO is working. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's uh, it's cool. So, so when you joined Unhack, how was your experience? Like, do you remember how many interviews you did? How quickly you got the job? Yes, yes. So, uh, with Unhack, um, uh, with Unhack, whenever I find it, uh, so the first step was. Uh, uh was a language uh, test so mm -hmm. basically i created the account like do like all the regular stuff and the first kind of serious step for me was to do that english knowledge test in english proficiency test mm -hmm. so it took me some time to prepare kind of like to uh, uh like I mean, more uh, like to prepare myself mentally to do that task because, like, I was not, I, uh, I did not consider myself as a good English speaker at the time, and that mm. was kind of uh, like I was very afraid of not passing the test. Right. But like the test was really, really good. Like it was really focused on what is actually needed. So mm -hmm. I, I can compare because I later I passed the IELTS test, which is like very, <laughs> very different, <laughs> much harder and uh, not, not very specific to software development. Right. So, and that test was really good. And the, like, uh, unexpectedly for me, I got advanced uh, level. I, I knew it was important because like many companies were like uh, offering only for advanced uh, English skill, uh, like the like they were only considering those candidates who have that. 
Right. So I was lucky to get it, or maybe not lucky, but yeah. like I, I got it. You quit your job and study English twenty four hours a day, so it's not luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then I started to apply for uh, for many positions that were like anything close to what I uh, what I wanted to do and what I had uh, experience with. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, then uh, I remember uh, I was chosen for, like, I was shortlisted for some position. Mm -hmm. I uh, had an interview with uh, uh, a person from OneHack. Mm -hmm. uh, then, um, then, like, there was nothing for a couple of weeks uh uh yeah and after that i got the uh i got contacted by someone from OneHack that they have another position and this yeah. was the motion matrix nice nice so so let's talk about you actually getting hired like uh how was the interview process and then uh how did you feel when you got the offer yeah so uh like when i got that uh uh email about like motion metrics i started to look about what what is that company yeah and i decided i i really want to work in that company because mm -hmm. like it was very close to what i was looking for mm -hmm. you know i like some uh heavy industrial projects and they were exactly uh yeah mining yeah. yeah mining like uh software and hardware for excavators like uh, mm. trucks and so on so yeah that was very interesting for me mm. and i decided i i have i have to get this job <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I, I, and i did so oh, yeah. uh the process was that um uh i had an preparation interview from one hack Yes. Uh, so, like, it was amazing. The uh, the person from Van Hack helped me to uh, prepare, like, for the real questions, and those questions were asked. Mm. Like, so it was uh, really, really good and important step. Like, I really appreciate that Van Hacks helped the candidates to 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 get through the interview and also uh i was not very good at speaking like and not just in english but in general so mm -hmm. like uh it helped me to mentally prepare for the uh for the actual interview mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right then i had a short call with uh with the guy who is my current team lead and mm -hmm. like he the call was supposed to be like 30 minutes it was like 50 because we we wow. had a lot of topics to discuss like uh on our views like on how uh, how everything like should be developed managed and so on mm -hmm. so yeah my previous experience was like i also was le leading the team back in ukraine right, right. and like uh, the team was multi like uh, functional team that has also like hardware developers and mechanical engineers and so on so like mm -hmm. we were basically on the same page and uh yeah they uh so after that interview uh like in in couple of days i got uh, an invitation for the next step so that was the uh like the whiteboarding interview the technical interview and it also include uh like uh, uh hr and and like the uh, company uh director uh so mm -hmm. uh that was supposed to be three hours i think that get like almost four hours wow <laughs> yeah 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 so motion metrics likes long in interviews at least like used to so <laughs> yeah so so i successfully passed that part 
even though I I was a bit nervous, but like it's it was still okay, and like that there was no problems with technical part. Then they asked a, a couple of questions about my experience, mm -hmm. uh, and then I had a talk with uh, uh, the director, right. the director of core products, the director of the department in which I currently work. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, and right after that, I get an request from Van Hack to provide reference from yeah. two former em employers. And like I, mm, I, I did that very fast. So yeah. I sent uh, the requests, uh, I provided the contacts and so on. Uh, and then I think that was around a week that I got an offer. Nice. So, how did it feel like when you got that email? Did, where, where were you? Like, you were you at home? Were you? Uh, yeah. Bring me to that moment. Mm. So at that time, uh, uh, that time I was visiting my wife's parents. So yeah. uh, I remember that, like, I had to print that and sign and. And okay. return back. So they they live at a small village and they didn't have printers. So <laughs> <laughs> that that was a whole process. Did you have cell phone reception at least? You get like the the internet, so you can check your email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there was a cell phone coverage. So nice. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's awesome. So so you moved with your wife then? Is that right? Uh, yeah, here to Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Um, so, so you got the job offer, and then how was the relocation process? Like, it's a big move, right, from the other side of the world. Oh, uh, the the relocation process was like really long because, like, it was uh, uh, it, it it was affected by the pandemic. Mm. Like the whole like that was right the time when the uh, so uh, like I got that offer. I started like collecting the documents some of them i already had because i know i know i will need them mm -hmm. but for example like upfront medical exam that that became a challenge right so i had an appointment that i had to cancel because uh, i i got sick that was not COVID, but like you you are not going to go to the medical exam being sick so mm -hmm. i had to cancel that and I wasn't able to make a new appointment because like all the appointments were closed. So, and uh, like in, as the result at that time, the whole visa process, like from the time that I applied and submitted all the documents that I had, mm -hmm. obviously I wasn't able to provide the medical exam. So the immigration consultant from Van Hack, like, uh, uh, he told me to apply without that and it was exactly eight months until i got a letter to go for a medical exam like wow wow yeah 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 i remember during that time all the embassies were closed in the hospitals and yeah it was definitely tough with uh, yeah, was, yeah 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 At were that you time, working remotely during that time like were you able to start working with the company yes yes i started working with the company uh so like i applied for a visa on april 8 2020 yeah and i started working on may 8 yeah so that would be a month right like i started to work in remotely in a month like i uh registered my individual entrepreneurship here like in ukraine and uh uh like opened a bank account and uh, was getting paid by invoices here in ukraine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. during nice. that time i also moved so i used to live in big city and western ukraine Lviv, mm -hmm. but uh, at that time like i didn't know that the visa process was will be so long 
Yeah. Because it, it is supposed to be like two weeks in normal circumstances. And I expect expected like two or maybe three months. Yeah. Uh, yeah things to... really slowed down in 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and uh, I decided to move to to the village uh mm. to the white parents to spend some time with them nice so i was working from there uh most of my time cool cool awesome well um how's life now how how are you know you're you moved to canada about a year and a half ago i guess um that's right i'm not sure like how, how are you enjoying life in canada uh so yeah we we moved to Canada in December 2020, like okay. despite all the uh, all the uh, all the restrictions with COVID and so on, we were able to get the proper documents proving that we are we have the essential purpose. Mm -hmm. Like basically, relocation was considered as essential purpose. Had to get like additional letter for my wife to come, so she she is able to come. And uh, yeah, so uh, we moved here, spent 14 days in quarantine, figuring mm -hmm. out like how to uh, how to uh, how to get a Canadian pen card, like how to open an account, like everything was yeah. out exiting home. <laughs> like so, my company did a good job in helping me with uh, like this. Uh, uh cell phone like with the food for like my first day when we just like came from the airport because we move we fly from uh from Lviv to uh from Lviv to uh Poland then from Poland okay. to Toronto and then from Toronto like in yeah. the Toronto airport we had to spend the night because like we are not allowed to go to the hotel <laughs> and in the morning we fly to Van to Vancouver, uh, get a taxi and move to the ho home that we uh, that we booked via Airbnb, and we are still in that same home. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> but are you still paying on Airbnb? Or? No, no, no. It's uh, we like after our Airbnb. Uh, uh, and that we just signed the tenancy agreement, and we are nice. really happy about the home, about everything here. Beautiful. So, what yeah, <laughs> yeah, the life is is very comfortable. It's it's very different because like everything here is uh, like uh, it's about comfort, right? Like mm -hmm. you have big vehicles, you have like big houses. Um, yeah, and people can afford this, mm -hmm. like. Comparing to comparing to Ukraine, you know, uh, like the IT specialists have like good salaries, but most of the other people know. Yeah, and we are like very different. Whereas like here, uh, I I have a good job. I uh, I have a decent salary, but yeah. still, it's not any close to, for example, what doctor earn <laughs> here. Right, right. Like it's uh like uh so good to be like a normal part to feel myself as a part of like normal like middle class mm. or like upper middle class rather than like being like so uh so rich comparing to all other people that are not in it mm. uh not in it industry in ukraine so that, that was very different Interesting. That's a really, really cool perspective. Um, maybe just to finishing off on, on this topic, um, what would you say to other, you know, tech professionals in Ukraine right now, uh, or other Ukrainians around the world? Like, uh, um, would you recommend Van Hack to them to be a way to to move, or any other words you might want to say to them? Yeah, sure. So Van Hack is really great uh, option to get hired here in Canada. It offers a lot of support, like immigration consultant, uh, like uh, as I said, uh, uh, help with the interview process, and yeah. So actually, uh, like we are still like the company that I get hired still, uh, at least as far as I 
now works with, with one hack or plans to work with one hack to hire more specialists so yes. yeah it's really good like it's a win-win for both the employer who seeks a, a, a person that is highly qualified and he cannot find someone on the local uh, uh, job market uh, and for the candidates who really want to to relocate to get different experience get international experience like being here not and not just working remotely yeah yeah i appreciate that thank you um well um marianne th thank you so much again for taking the time to chat with us uh really incredible story you have um uh all the way from you know ukraine to canada with the, all this travel and COVID in between that, that's uh, that's a really um i guess unique journey um and uh yeah thank you so much again wishing you all the best thank you